the inefficiencies in supply chain are back pressure holding back all the other world's industries. Every industry depends on it. Employment, jobs, prosperity is really held back by a rotten or at least dilapidated infrastructure for global logistics. Flexport's one of the most important companies out there trying to improve this, trying to uh, almost like do open heart surgery on the world's circulatory system of the economy. A company that's been on my radar for a few years is called Flexport. Flexport came from Y Combinator and it's backed by a lot of the leading figures in Silicon Valley, but it's challenging a very ancient and uh, sometimes backwards industry in the shipping world. So Flexport is a freight forwarder, which means that it doesn't own ships or planes or trains, but it does help its customers book space on all those vessels to get things from the factory to the warehouse or the store. It also does a lot of other things like customs, insurance, financing, everything kind of in that logistics chain, getting something from point A to point B for the consumer like us. What's interesting to me about Flexport is that its CEO last year really became sort of the face of the supply chain problem and solutions to try to fix it. Not as much was being said about his business. How big is Flexport? Is Flexport a good business? What do people think about it? And what does the existing industry think of this Silicon Valley startup that has moved in and is saying we can do things better and faster? Ryan Peterson actually got his start importing and exporting random goods from China to Arizona where he was working with his big brother. So I was buying products in China mostly, but all over the world, um, buying motorsports products. We imported these products, my brother and I and, a, and another friend of ours, and sold them through the internet. So we were sort of e-commerce entrepreneurs, but also in, importers. I felt that we were really suffering at the hands of the world's freight forwarders. Uh, nobody could tell me where my stuff was, how much it was gonna cost, what all these confusing regulations were, the paperwork. It, it, I felt like I was getting ripped off. Um, and after a number of years of doing some other things, I built a business selling data on imports and exports as well. I finally came back to this problem of like, where's the technology platform that makes it easy to do global trade? Uh, and that was now eight years ago. It's been eight years since I started Flexport. In January, I visited the port of Oakland with Ryan Peterson to watch a ship get loaded up with containers heading back to Asia. It was a slow process where you could really see the areas where innovation would make sense. But for Peterson, this is all beautiful. I argue often that I, don't, I think no technology in the 20th century lifted more people out of poverty than the shipping container. We reduced the price of shipping by 95, maybe even 99% in some places. And that's had a tremendous upward uh, benefit for all of humanity. Uh, it's cheaper to buy things. It's e easier to find customers all over the world. Businesses can go global. So it's been very powerful. But we also haven't seen a lot of progress. I mean, the shipping container was invented in the 1960s. We're still loading them one at a time. Uh, it's pretty manual operation. I, I'd love to see real innovation here where you could increase the throughput of these ports uh, and bring machine learning into bear on, you know, finding the right container at the right moment so that drivers don't have to wait for hours at the port gate. There's a lot of opportunity still for technology here in this industry. Shipping is obviously one of the oldest trades in the world. It's been around for thousands of years. And in recent times, shipping has been known as sort of a family business or a business that is not one of a lot of innovation. It's, it's one of relationships. Not exactly the most technologically savvy, historically group. I assume that big companies had sort of like advanced systems and AI and all these things. And it was only after we got started that big companies started signing up and coming to us to talk to us. And did we realize that in fact, even the biggest companies in the world are running these supp sophisticated supply chains by emailing Microsoft Excel attachments uh, and PDFs and making phone calls. And, and they really had a need for the kinds of technology that we build. What you need to understand about global freight forwarding is, I, I sometimes joke it should be called global freight email forwarding. Uh, to, to move one container of goods from, let's say, a factory in Vietnam to a warehouse in the middle of the United States, you'll actually have as many as 10 or 12 companies, and sometimes more, play a role. Uh, from the factory itself, the importer, the warehouse, trucking companies in both countries, ports, 
customs brokerages who clear the goods through the government agencies, ocean carriers, an insurance company, a bank. It's a complex coordination problem. Um, and what Flexport has done differently is build interfaces, build software, whether that's a web interface, mobile app, uh, and increasingly it's about APIs where software can talk to software to connect all these parties and get them the data they need or get us the data we need from them and make trade seamless. So that cuts costs. In the 2000s, shipping hit historic lows that forced these ocean carriers who've been around for a long time to rethink their business. So you have a lot of people thinking, how can we improve getting things onto the ship so that ships aren't running half empty, people are actually getting their stuff on time, even if the margins and the dollars here are not very big. That's actually great for a company like Flexport, which was able to come into the market and say, hey, we don't care exactly which ship or exactly which customer we're using, but we're gonna make sure that somebody is gonna have something to load and somebody's gonna pay for that freight to go across the ocean. And that's really what these carriers needed. In July 2020, something crazy happens. Everyone starts buying stuff again. And whether it's furniture for your house or it's you know, a new home office or it's at home fitness equipment, and that's when suddenly prices go back up and it's really hard to ship things on time. This is a crisis that the shipping industry continues to deal with today, is really high prices to ship freight. You know, a container that might have cost $1,800 to ship across the Pacific a couple of years ago, now can cost $18,000. It's a pretty tough moment to operate in our industry. I mean, on the one hand, it's nice people are finally taking notice and, and appreciating the fact that Container shipping is a vital part of the world's economic infrastructure and not taking it for granted, but prices are way up and performance is way down. Most ships are late right now. A lot of transit time failures. The pandemic's really taking a toll on the industry. So customers are upset and it's never fun to work in a business where your customers aren't super happy with how things are going. I think it's important to consider Flexport also by its global impact. Flexport.org has shipped tens of millions of units of PPE during the pandemic. 50% of the world's air freight flies in the belly of passenger planes. And those were all grounded because of the pandemic. Uh, and that's how we called United Airlines, Delta, and a few other airlines. Um, Condor was one of the big ones in Europe and got them to give us, in some cases we paid for it, in some cases they donated. And we just stuffed all these masks in here. And then once, that, once we started doing this work, we became kind of a center of gravity and all these other Hospital network started coming to us. It turned out they'd never imported anything before. I don't think we took a, deep, took a breath for like three months where it was just like, wow, this is, you know, 18 hour days every day. It was great because often we feel like we know we're having important impact in the world. Well, it's not that obvious. Like sometimes you're just shipping a cardboard box and now it's like, hey, we're saving lives right now. We can ship anything anywhere. It feels like a superpower sometimes. If you can help the supply chain in some small way, we're talking multiple trillions of dollars of innovation that are there for the taking. And I think it's the scope, the scale of this that is maybe hard for people to appreciate. It's the kind of challenge for someone who wants to have real global impact.